this desk is a mess right now. I'm working on a few different projects. Um, one of which is a replacement style of joystick control knob because these things kind of suck. This other chair over here, I've got one of the body point ones that's sort of a little like foam ball type thing, but they want like $65 for them. So I've got something here just off camera that you can't see um, that I'm gonna show you later. But for right, crinkly bag. For right now though, there's another project. I've got a desk lamp and this is one of those Wi-Fi light bulbs. Most of the LED bulbs are a little bit longer and the bulb sticks down a tiny bit below the lampshade, so it basically blasts my eyeballs with uh, light pollution. I attempted to use a Magnum Sharpie and sort of color in part of it, um, but when this is powered on, the light still blasts through that. No problem at all. So, I have a not so new exciting product. Plasti Dip. This is like tool handle, um, well, yeah, it's this. Uh, this is in black. So I think what we're gonna try and do is dip this bulb in here, and I'm hoping the diameter of the can is big enough to allow that to happen. I've never used this stuff before, but I think it might be the perfect um, secret sauce for what we're trying to do here. And it looks like the diameter is all right. Um, so let me read the directions here. Not for use as an architectural coating. Not sure what that means. 30 minutes minimum, four hours dry time. Oh yeah, that's, that's some sludge right there. I wonder if I should have shaken it first. Oh yeah, that is definitely chemicals. I don't know why I stuck my nose on that just now. It doesn't say anything about shaking it. All right, well, let's just go ahead and do it. I've got a, um, oh, dang it. It's made a mess. Ew. And the bulb doesn't fit. Um, just do one of these. Can you imagine the mess this would make if I dropped it right now? <laughs> Seem to have a coating on here. I think that should um, do what I'm trying to, hopefully. All right. Um, I'm gonna find something to stand this up on and let it dry for a while. All right, we're gonna use a lighting rig here and power this thing up. I'm sure there's people out there that are screaming at me right now. They're like, what are you doing? You're not supposed to use heat. Well, there's like a thousand switches on the back of this and I'm not sure which one turns this one on. Nope. 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 Ah, there we go. All right, so we're gonna let that congeal for a while. Okay, here's the bulb, here's the light fixture. Uh, I think it's dry enough to screw it back in there. Go ahead and uh, reinstall. Ah, that is so perfect. So the problem before is this light bulb, as you can see, is a little bit lower than the bottom of the lampshade. So this was just blasting light right into my eyes. And now we get a nice light going down. And since this part's black, um, it's not as harsh. Probably see people do that in restaurants and stuff. I think sometimes they put like a silver coating on there, but I think that works. Okay, so we're in one of those interesting predicaments again. In the past, I've had police wait for me when I leave court and pull me over to give me tickets right as I leave and uh, I'm about to leave power soccer practice and I just realized that my tags are expired. That's totally my fault, I understand, but um, there's a cop sitting over here behind me in the parking lot. So I'm gonna take my chair over to a nearby gas station and get some snacks and uh, see if we can suss this situation out. I would prefer not to get a ticket if possible. And Monday, I'm gonna go to the DMV and get my tags renewed. I just completely forgot about it but it's the same department that has done this to me on two different occasions and also one of my other friends. It's a fairly common practice. They like to sit around and wait for people. So, um, fun stuff. We'll see how this goes. Okay, I don't see him sitting over here anymore, but it doesn't mean he isn't somewhere else. Uh, so we'll scope this out. All right, we have some beef jerky and exotic coffees and cheese. 
haven't seen the guy sitting around here, so hopefully I'm just paranoid. We're gonna hop back in the van and see what happens. So the DMV used to be open on the weekends in Oregon, but they are not anymore. Um, otherwise I would just go down there right now and take care of it. But it's gonna be Monday before I can and I've got some more running around I have to do today. Um, I need to go over to storage and drop off this chair. Um, so there's a little bit of a loophole and I'll explain that when we get to storage. But for now, um, let me get loaded up and uh, I'll explain how to temporarily remedy this. We have arrived at storage. One interesting thing, um, sort of this bypass I was talking about, not that I'm gonna take any action on it, but just something to note. In Oregon, there are no ordinances or codes saying that you have to have tags on your license plates. What it does say, however, is it's illegal to display them past the date of their expiration. So in theory, if your vehicle's registered and that's taken care of because fail to register is a ticket you can get, but if your vehicle's registered and you don't have tags on it, there actually isn't a violation. Um, that's one of those things that goes back to a long time ago because the money is being used for taxes for the roads, but your taxes are already paying for the roads. So in effect, you're paying double taxes. There's people here in town that don't ever pay parking meters for the same reason. And a lot of times they win in court when they get a parking ticket saying that it goes against the uh, state's codes and constitution or whatever applies in the situation that you're basically paying twice. So just an interesting thought. If you don't have tags at all, there technically is no violation. Just saying. I will be going to the DMV at the next next time they are open. So it's not like I'm trying to get around paying a few dollars for tags or anything. But uh, anyways, yeah, just pointing that out. We have our soccer chair here uh, brought back out to storage. I'm gonna take a moment and have some uh, beef and cheese. Oh man, my bungee cords keep breaking. Okay, um, so aside from this smaller Bluetooth speaker here, which has cat hair on it, um, we've got the 3D printer that we brought back from storage. And this, I think, is going to aid us in making some more of these um, or something. I don't know what's going on right now. I haven't completely woken up. Although I did just realize while we're at the hardware store, I'm going to um, buy the parts I need to make another mount for this camera on this van uh, because it would be nice to be able to mount it to the dashboard and not have to hold it on certain occasions. Got the old Bluetooth cassette tape here. Time for some Sunday morning jams, I think. This thing actually works amazingly well. It's, um early in the morning <laughs> it's almost 11 okay so let's pick up where we left off um, I'm working on making some replacement joystick uh, topper things joystick knobs whatever um, and I'm interested in this plasti dip stuff or the tool handle coating um, but I forgot to grab it when I was at storage dang it so there's another style, I'll put a picture on the screen, but there's another style of uh, joystick knob that's sort of a round rubber dome. And it's actually about the size of this drain cover. And my thought was, if I could get something like this, which is somewhat flexible, and then plasti dip it, and have a way to attach it using, using these little quarter inch uh, motor shafts with set screws, um, we could very inexpensively make a very, there we go, a fairly inexpensive, very usable joystick, um, controller knob. I think, oh, I don't have much range of motion. Hang on a second. Let me grab something. Okay. I think I just got a text. No, I didn't. Phantom vibration. Okay. So here we have a joystick. This is the loner. If you remember it from previous videos, which I may or may not link if I remember. Um, 
Okay, yeah, so the mushroom, I don't know if they call it that, but there's there's a joystick knob that looks a lot like this. So anyways, there was that. And then as I was digging around at the hardware store, I found there's a lot of other options. Like, how about one of these dish strainers upside down? You know, we could obviously uh, take the middle part out, cut that out, rubber coat the whole thing. And then instead of rubber coating stuff, why don't we just get something that's actually made from rubber? So this is the rubber drain stopper. And then we've got another one in here. Now this one I had thought about potentially mounting, obviously remove the ring, but mounting upside down. Uh, so you could have sort of something, you know, that you could get your the side of your hand in or something like that, you know. If you've, uh, Body Point makes a whole bunch of these, you can look up on their website, they've got a bunch of random stuff. It's all like 60 or $80. So my thought is, why don't I make something that's way cheaper? And the last option, which I think is what we're gonna play around with right now, are these. These are bathtub strainers. Ooh, the lavatory sink strainers. Um, what I wanna do here is obviously plasti dip them or coat them in rubber, but these I think, obviously I'm gonna have to make a mounting thing to get them the right height, but these I think would be a pretty good um, middle ground uh, because you've got sort of the bump in the middle so you can rest your hand on the side of it. Um, you can use your palm or, you know, put your fingers on there however you want. So I think these coated in rubber might be something to do. So we're gonna try that. Um, I think with this mesh, the uh, Plasti Dip stuff, they keep calling it Plasti Dip. It's not plastic, it's like rubber. Oops, I just done it that. So hopefully this mesh will work sort of like rebar inside of it. But I'm just now realizing that this can is kind of small and this is not, actually it almost does. <laughs> this is not gonna fit inside. Oh yeah, there we go. Clearly not gonna fit inside. So I might have to go buy some more of this and then dump it into a bigger container that I can seal. Ooh, maybe a peanut butter jar. I'm gonna run to assorted hardware stores, get some more of this stuff. I'm not gonna like them on Facebook because that's dumb. <laughs> and we're gonna continue this project in a bit. And hopefully by then I'll be a little bit more awake and this coffee will be maybe down here somewhere. I mean, so I'll see you in about this much coffee. <laughs> I think it goes without saying, or maybe I said it before, but anytime you're gonna put on a hoodie, either turn off your chair or hit mode so that when inevitably your hoodie catches on the joystick, it won't send you flying through a wall. Because um, hoodies are probably mo one of the most dangerous things for power chair users. And that's not just me saying that. I've, um, I've spoken to plenty of other people <sighs> that have showed me huge dents in their walls because of hoodies. Um, yeah, life hack. Okay, we got a bunch of assorted stuff, including some new uh, adjustable bungee cords uh, for the ramp. I'll explain uh, what I'm doing with that here in a minute. But um, I think uh, what I'm gonna do for the camera mount is I got, um, like a couple of these clamps and then also some more of these Simpson ties and uh, these actually work really well uh, when you have a vehicle where you don't care if you drive screws into your dashboard so basically we're going to attach this to the back and then mount it to the dashboard and then I can I can use this to attach the camera mount to the dashboard so I think that should work okay we're back um, real question is how much coffee has been consumed. Not quite as much as I was predicting, but I did mix it up a little bit strong today, so can't exactly shotgun that stuff. Um, but we have assorted thingies. As it turns out, um, I paid too much. This was $12 at a, another smaller hardware store. I went to the um, this place. It was $7 a can. Um, 
So say what you will about large corporations, but sometimes it's a lot cheaper when you're trying to get something done. Also got these um, paint mixing things with some lids because we're gonna have to pour all this into something, but I wanna be able, bucket, bucket echo. Um, I wanna be able to seal it off um, when we're done because I don't know if pouring this stuff back and forth into the cans, I mean, obviously it's gonna make a mess. Um, so for the camera mount, uh, Simpson tie and these, let's see here, Aha. and uh, this clamp, which is really hard to press, but what we're gonna do is attach this to the dashboard and this to this. So this thing will basically be sticking out of the dashboard and then I can just squeeze this and stick the camera in there. I think that'll work the best for now. Um, what to do next is the question. I think I'm gonna eat my food. So I'd, I almost drop it. Then we're going to go apply these bungee cords to the ramp on the van and uh, I'll show you why these are necessary in a few minutes. So, anywho, um, we need some food, then we'll return. First off, I think what we're gonna do here is work on this um, camera mounting type setup. And to figure out kind of where I wanna put it on the dashboard here and have it still be like useful and stuff. Um, I don't have passengers in here a whole lot, so I don't think this would necessarily be in the way. Although, maybe having it... Yeah, probably right about here, I think, would be good. That way, the... Um, yeah, the camera... Uh, the selfie stick thing will be over here, and it won't really be blocking anything. And if someone's sitting here, they won't have this thing sticking them in the face. Um, so, let's see. We're just about lined up between these two buttons right here. So, uh, we'll grab some uh, tech screws. That's what I was trying to say. Da -da. Actually, no, we're not going to use tech screws. We'll just use sheetrock screws. Those usually go into the dashboard pretty well on this thing. So let's do that. And then I've got a whole bunch of other bolts and stuff here we can use to attach the uh, clamp to the bracket. Where do we decide? Oh yeah, right between those two buttons there. So, time for screws. Uh, maybe I'm gonna use a longer one. There's usually, I mean, so you got the foam on the dashboard, but there's usually a hard plastic backing back in there somewhere. So we're gonna use a uh, inch and a quarter, or inch and a half screw. And, uh... oh yeah, there we go, that, that's it that bit in there. I probably shouldn't be using the super powerful impact driver for this. Should probably be doing it by hand because all that uh, torque will definitely strip out whatever plastic there may be back there. Okay, there we go. Looks like something. Tighten that up a little more. All right, there we go, nice solid thing. This is not the only thing I've mounted to the dashboard. Over here, I've got our um, manual easy lock release, and I did the same thing, just driving screws in there. Um, once again, beauty of driving an old rat rod type vehicle is, who cares if you drive screws into the dashboard? I just need to look through the toolbox here for a bolt that will be about the right size, and I think that should work. Although I'm probably gonna have to drill out the holes on the bracket itself because, oh, hang on, let me keep digging here. I probably got something. I've opted here to just go ahead and uh, drill out the holes in the um, in the bracket because that's going to be a lot easier than other things. So I happen to have a bunch of these stainless steel uh, bolts with washers and lock washers. So I figured, hey, might as well use these for what I'm trying to do here. Do believe that should be a fairly solid mount. The camera I'm using has, uh, well, not this camera, but the action camera I'm using has very, very good stabilization. So uh, I think even if we get a little bit of motion from the dashboard, we should still be good to go. All right, 
uh, man, that spring is hard to, that's going to be a two handed operation right there, but okay. I'm going to rest for a minute or two and then uh, we'll move on to the next project here. In a previous video, I think it was called taking things apart. Um, or something to that effect. I'll, um, I'll link it in the, um, let's see. I'm never sure which side I should be pointing at. I think it's this side. Yeah, up here in this corner, there'll be a link to that video. But I took apart this actuator and then we had to replace a bolt that was broken down here. But the problem we have is the clearance is so close for this ramp that uh, it needs just a little bit of positive pressure from a bungee cord to uh, pull it in so the door will clear. Uh, these bungee cords have been on here for over a year. I figure that's a pretty good service life for one of these things. But as you can see here, our clearance is very little. And sometimes this ramp, if I'm on a hill, will be out like that. And you can see it interferes with the door. So we just need a very slight pulling motion down. Um, and yeah, I mean, the other bungee cords on the floor under my chair, and this one you can see is starting to split as well. So we got some new adjustable ones here, and uh, we'll get these set up. All we need to do is basically bend, once again, probably not the best thing to do with diagonal cutters. Um, you see to bend this out a little bit wider, so it, okay, I'm gonna need something more substantial, but it needs to fit around the bottom of this. Uh, so it just needs to be opened up a little bit. And as you can see, now it hooks on here just perfectly. The top one on here, bottom one's hooked. We'll probably trim this off, but let's give it a stretch test. Uh, that seems like a lot of stretch. Maybe, maybe too much. You know, that's probably why I used two before. I think I uh, hooked it so it wasn't quite as tight and then used two of them to double up the slightly weaker force. Yeah, I think that's what we're gonna have to do here again. All right, let me get this other one set up. All right, I think we're good to go. That all tucks away in there quite nicely. I have, however, kind of had a habit recently of leaving this lift deployed uh, for hours on end. I think the trick is going to be not doing that. Um, and our bungee cord should last a little longer. Plus, there's no really reason to leave it open. Uh, it just lets more spiders and bugs in there. <laughs> okay, um... About to have some friends over, so I'm going to be busy and hanging out for a while, but I think before that, I want to go ahead and shake up these two unopened cans and dump them into this container. You can't really shake it after you've opened it because, I mean, while it does have a lid, it gets all over the lid. Plus, these don't seal very well. They were loose. Um, I put some electrical tape around this one to kind of seal it, but after you put them on there, they, um, they don't seem airtight. We'll get these shaken up, dump them in here, and these lids seal on these things airtight. Well, I suppose I have to sit here for a few minutes and let this uh, drain, because I want to get every last drop out. This stuff's expensive. Oh boy, it smells like... It smells like the warning label indicates. Uh, battery's almost dead. Okay, we'll have to make this quick. I'll see if I can do this in one try. I finally have one of the things I've wanted my entire life. A light I can pull down from the ceiling. <laughs> you know, like in TV shows, they always go into an interrogation room and just pull a light down really low. <laughs> okay, I've got to replace the battery in this now.